Hi, everybody. This is Craig Hardesty with Out on Film, and I want to welcome everybody to our In Conversations with series. And today, I'm really excited to have uh, director Matt Carter from the film In From the Sides, which is one of our favorite films of the festival this year. So, Matt, welcome to Out on Film, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Matt, tell us a little bit. So, we are screening In From the Side on Saturday. Uh, the 24th at Out on Film for our 35th anniversary. And this is, as I tell people, it's sexy rugby boys. What's more to say? <laughs> What's more to um, say, indeed? Right. Um, but it's a lot more than that. I mean, it's sexy rugby boys, so look, don't get me wrong. Um, but tell us a little bit about the genesis of this film, where, where it comes from for you and why you thought it was important to tell this story at this time. So I suppose some background for me, I've been involved in inclusive rugby for about eight years, both as a player, a coach and a referee. And, you know, this is the world I've lived in for, the, for a number of years. And I think it's uh, there's so many interesting cultural elements to rugby and rugby is really underexplored on film generally. And, um, and I've always thought as a filmmaker, it's something I'd love to put to film and love to tell a story set in that world. Um, you know, as a hopeless romantic as well, I wanted to do a, a love story set in that world as well and use the rugby as the stage from which that's, that story is told. But yeah, so essentially, it's, I've always wanted to, to set a story set in the world of inclusive rugby because it's something that is, is very close to my heart. And so when you say that it's, it's a film about rugby, it's a, it's a film about love. But one of the things that I, I think really kind of struck me watching it and that I very much appreciate it was it starts in the middle of life. So everybody's out. <laughs> um, there, there's not, you know, an incident necessarily that sparks a story like of homophobia or coming out or hiding. Um, well, there's a little bit of hiding, but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> different kind, different. For different, a different reasons. kind of hiding. Um, but talk to us a little bit about, there, there's no is he or isn't he, you know, everybody's out. And so that's I'd, say, <laughs> I'd say from right from the beginning of the, the sort of inception of the idea, we said, uh, my, my co-writer Adam Silver and I said, we're going to tell, tell a story with no coming out and with no homophobia. Okay. Because I think, uh, you know, not to say that there's not a place for that, but sure. there's, there's plenty of people telling those right. stories, but not many people telling other stories. And I think, you know, there is life after coming out, you know, right. there's, there's a whole lot of it. And I think, you know, we very much wanted to tell a story about some of the more complex, more interesting things that happen in the gay experience when once you're living your authentic life, you know, or at least trying to, you know, as a lot of these right. characters are, are striving to, um, you know, being their authentic self and being in this environment where they're surrounded by other gay people, where they can just be themselves and and they aren't bogged down. Or the story isn't bogged down with, you know, uh, lots of coming out, lots of homophobia storylines. Right. I think once you go down that route, it is kind of all encompassing. It's hard to for that not to sort of poison the well and become the whole story because it is such a big thing. Right. Once you have a you know this group of um a sort of you know self actualized characters, we get to then explore. The interpersonal relationships the drama that comes from that and for me that, that was much more interesting and also something that we've not really seen much of um you know yeah we we don't see it a lot because like you said once there's a, a that central kind of plot it, it's hard to get away from it uh but this film you know for for a gay audience and i'll say as a gay man as a particularly gay audience it kind of gives us access to our own lives like you said yeah after coming out or absent, you know, some kind of outside influence, it's really about us. Yeah, I think, you know, if I had to summarize the film in sort of one word or sort of one phrase, I'd say it's a film about belonging. And I think as gay men and finding our tribe and finding that people who, who were around those people, we feel like we deeply belong is quite a powerful thing. And I think that's one of the power that, you know, sport and inclusive clubs can have on people is because, you know, I think there's a, a without spoiling it, because I don't know if people have seen the film at this point right. or not, um, as a scene in the film, where one of the characters talks about their, you know, their experience in school with sport and how that can often put off a lot of gay men from from ever trying sport again in their life. But actually, when you visit it again as an adult, it can bring such wealth of well being to your life, and you know, and, and you you find your sort of your family. We use that phrase a lot in the film, rugby right. family. It is like that, you know, and, and like a family, people always don't get along, and you 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 have, you have lots of people from different backgrounds and different walks of life and different perspectives, and you are going to fight and and have info. You know, not everyone's going to get along. And that, right. <laughs> that, and that, but that's life, you know, and that creates, yeah. and, that's, and that's, and that's super interesting for me as a writer to try and explore some of that. Um, and that was sort of the driving force behind the film because you've got this love story, but it's set in this world with these, you know, these other characters and how this love story affects 
the, the you know the wider world that they're in in this club but also you know the, the different types of love that the that these characters have for each other you know fraternal love and sort of romantic and amorous love and unrequited love in one of the storylines you know henry who's sort of the main character mark's best friend who I think we we can all relate to. We've all had a friend okay. who maybe have liked a bit more than they liked us back. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and I think that's that in yeah. itself. You know, there's so many things that I found really in interesting when you know we're exploring this material and when writing this that I thought we there's just so much to 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 mine in terms of storytelling. Well, and, and some of the storytelling, like you said, there is a there is an aspect we as a as a group have tended to shy away from sports, having had really bad experiences, but you didn't decide to make this about theater kids, um, which, yeah. <laughs> um, but really kind of center it in an activity that really does allow people a place to belong where once they either didn't belong or felt they didn't belong. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it's funny to say theater kids, you know, cause it is, I mean, one, uh, Alexander King, who's the actor yeah. who plays Warren, he often makes the, the sort of the remark that actually a rugby club is not so different from a theater club. Right. <laughs> lots of big personalities all there for the same reason. You right. know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's different in its own way. But I think what's quite interesting is that um, people don't find that so unremarkable, you know, find that pretty normal to, to see lots right. of gay characters in the theater, but seeing it in a sports club for, for a lot of people, they think that there's a disconnect, which I find fascinating because why, why, why can't gay men play sport? You know, it's, right. Why is it? Why is it? It's not. It's it's pretty unremarkable to have game and playing sport, especially you know a physical sport like rugby. And I love challenging the perception that rugby is a sort of a, a stereotypical, let's say, right. heteronormative sport that's for straight people or for the straight world only. And I think that's complete nonsense. And I love the fact that we we had that that opportunity to break those stereotypes and to show because inclusive rugby. I don't know if a lot of people know this is an enormous thing now. There's about 150 right. different inclusive clubs across the globe, you know, and it, it not that's just rugby. Let alone others, right. you know, it's 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 growing, and people gays are getting into sport like nothing else, you know. Right. And, I, and I think people don't really realize this, and don't. And I think if anything, I'd love it if this film could uh, could raise the awareness of the fact that sport is for everyone, and that you know, um, whether it's rugby or any other sport, that actually you know that, that that's something that's accessible and and perfectly normal for gay people to get into or queer people. So it's said in in this rugby club, and and, and one of the the central storyline is. Two of the guys, Trick, and they develop some feelings for each other. And maybe they shouldn't, maybe they should. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's- Centrally, it's... there is this, this central love story that develops out of this one moment. I we're, think we're you know, as, um, <laughs> well, we, we certainly have. And I think, yeah. you know, again, that's not some, you know, uh, open relationships and sort of one night stands and, you know, these mm -hmm. all sort of interesting things that happen in the gay community. You know, they're all stories that we we, we will have one story like that. You know, it's right. something that's big, a big part of our lives. And I think, again, I've not really seen much of that explored on film. And that was a big reason why, um, you know, the rules that we set for ourselves in love, the, the rules that we break. Um, and, you know the sort of the transgressions we we sort of cast, but but also the sort of the beauty behind some of it that's often thrown aside, you know, for the sake of morality. I think, you know, we're we're very careful to be non-judgmental in this film and to sort of present the events as they you know as they happen without sort of trying to hold the audience's hand down a certain moral path right. and say you should feel this way about these characters. You know, they we're all flawed human beings. We all make mistakes and we all learn from them. And actually, you know, this is a story very much about you know showing these characters who learn from their mistakes. Um, and but also the, the love they find for each other, even if it is, you know, transgressional, is still beautiful. And, right. the, you know, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic. So, you know, I, I, I love <laughs> our films about love and I love telling stories about love. But, you know, we, we do invite the, the audience to sympathise with essentially these two adulterers um, and to sort of say, you know, actually, um, you know, what they're doing is, is wrong. But, but sometimes you can find love in unusual places. And, you know, and sometimes it's hard to break out of relationships that aren't right for you. And sometimes it takes that little push of someone else. And, these things are nuanced and complicated and that we want to delve into that nuance and that complication without sort of trying to be too propagandistic or moralistic or right, know, right. allow the and, audience and I, to make their mind up. And, and there is, you strike a real balance with that because these are choices that we make all the time and that we negotiate all the time. And sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong and sometimes they're right and wrong in the same moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and I think one of the things that I really appreciated about this film is that we're messy. <laughs> I All mean, people are, you know, and like... I, I think, you know, there's no character in the film who is, is universally good or bad. I think, you know, apart from maybe one, you know, I think right. one, who, who, that, who that universally good character <laughs> might be. But, um, but I think, you know, they're all complex people and you know, a lot of the bad things that we do come from the trauma that we, that we carry, the baggage we carry around. 
and that you know even even the sort of characters who maybe bully other characters you know a bully has often been bullied themselves in their past right. and it's reliving uh you know the experience the, the learned behavior that they've 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 uh, been subjected to and actually you know they're, they're all redeemable and they're all equally morally bereft you know in equal measure and that right. but that's people that's human that's why i think it's a very human story really and it's a very human story because there are points at which i i felt like am i rooting for them Am I not yeah. rooting for them? <laughs> it's the question that we get asked the most at the end. But, uh, going back to a Alexander King, you know, a lot of people right. say, to him, "Am I?" Uh, at the end of the film, they say, "Am I supposed to feel sorry for Warren?" Right. And he he loves by saying, "Well, do you?" You know, because right. it, 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 it's up to you. Because you know, you either can it, you can either love him or hate him. And some people, you know, various points of the film really despise him and really love him, and it's right. it's complicated. And it, I invite that discussion. That you know, it's it, I love making things that. Um, and I love the conversations that that happen after the film, where people want to go watch it with someone so they can talk about it for hours after and discuss them right. around, discuss the characters. And it's, it isn't that great? Like, isn't that sort of you know why we should be having films? Right, because it really is an authentic portrayal about a lot of, about how we live as a community in lots of circumstances. Yeah, um, I mean, and, and, and it's why you can think: Can you do that? Can you not do that? Can <laughs> yeah, and and all in the same kind of scene. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. You know, and I think. Um, you know, it's 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 a holding a mirror up to ourselves as a community, good and bad. And I think, yeah. you know, I mean, some people have, have taken negatively to the fact that you know, they they say, is this a film that's you know endorsing adultery? And it's saying, well, no, but not all. With something we do, we have to acknowledge right. the, the mistakes we make. Other, other, how are we going to learn from them? You know, and I think, uh, right. you know, and they definitely get their comeuppance for it. It's definitely a cautionary tale. Yeah. But <laughs> at the same time, it's it's also not not judgmental because you know right. people do things for different reasons, and sometimes that's justified, and sometimes right. it's. And, and I think it kind of, it brings up, it, it brings to, to light the complexities of open relationship. Well, exactly. Know, do they work, no. do they not? Is it okay, is it not okay? Is it good for you, not good for you? It changes. And, and I, it, I certainly don't have the answers to that. You know, I, right. I, I very much said when we were writing this, I said, I don't know, I don't have an opinion on this. So I feel right. like it, it'd be uh, morally deceitful to try and force an opinion into this film or to try and sort of be, have, have some sort of moral propaganda in this because right. I haven't come to a, a consensus about you know what I feel about open relationships or monogamy you know and I think it's also different for every every couple and every where right. we throuple or every quad you know or any kind of you right. know anything in between you know every every single people right. person who engages in a in a more complicated relationship uh you know it, it's it, it's different for every person and I think you know um the film definitely sort of highlights some of the problems that you can have in open relationships, you right? Know, and, and but also problems in monogamy. You know, if you if right. you're stuck in a relationship and you don't have you don't have honesty, then deceit's going to grow mm -hmm. out of the out of the space of uh, that should be uh, you know created for exploration. And if right. you're just honest about your partner about your desire for that, then maybe you know Warren might not have to do things behind his partner's back. But then at the same time, you know, if they'd adjusted the rules slightly for Mark, maybe. You know, a lot of people have actually said in, in some of the comments on the film, they say, uh, "Why can't they just get become a thruple?" You know, and then there'd be no, there'd be no, no drama. And I said, "You answered your own question. There'd be no drama and no there'd be no drama." <laughs> <laughs> Where's the film then? Right. You know, I think um, it would but, be know, a short. But, well, exactly. It'd be so. They meet the end. Um, but uh, I, you know, it, it's interesting to see the discussions happening and the kind of the you know yeah. the, the hand wringing that's going on over some of the moral themes of the film. It's very exciting. <laughs> Because I think it is so relatable for all of us. I mean, it does call into question. We all make choices, yeah. good choices, bad choices, things we regret, things we don't regret. Um, and, and, and these men are allowed to have those. Yeah. Um, and they're allowed to regret them and go back. And I mean, just kind of able to navigate through their emotional lives. One of the things that, that I, I was struck with too is as you kind of stated a little bit earlier, this is a, a film about belonging and, and where where do I fit in the world uh, and in my own world. And so, so much of this film is, is about friendship um, and about how we form those relationships and how we can mess them up and still be okay. Uh, so yeah. talk a little bit about kind of the importance of, you know, it, it's not just, it, it's teammates, it's family, but it's these friendships that form and are both elastic and forgiving and unforgiving all at the same time. Yeah, and I think, you know, you said that it, the film is about belonging and there's different forms and different types of belonging and whether that's, you know, belonging in your own family, you've got your sort of rugby family, you have sort of your belonging in a relationship. It is about sort of the friendships and I'd say the connections that we make with people and the, the different complexities in that, you know, just in, if in the B team in the film alone, that there's so many different types of connections and different... Right levels of friendship from acquaintance through to 
you know, unrequited love through to, you know, outright, you know, Mark and Warren's relationship, you know, that it's everything in between. And I think, you know, as gay men, that's, that's, we do have complicated friendships where we cross boundaries and where we don't. And that, and that's fascinating. You know, in fact, I'd almost feel we, we, we underexplored that in some sense. <laughs> I mean, there, there were, there were parts of the, in, in earlier scripts where, you know, certain, some of the secondary characters had sort of romantic flings with each other. And we thought it's too distracting from the main narrative. Right. It's already a long film, you know, um, <laughs> But, you know, it, it, a lot of people said, well, why don't you do a spin-off series? You know, that, that, right. as fun as that would be. But it does show there are so many different, there's so much to tell in this right. world. And, you know, and, and I think that's more a testament of we need more stories being told about these types of relationships and connections because we're so malnourished in that, in, in, right. in, in gay cinema generally, I think. Right. It shows us in all of our complexity and all of our humanity. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about casting. So the, the Alexanders, uh, Alexander Lincoln and Alexander King, tell us a little bit how how they came to this, how you found them, um, and so, how they came to this project. Yes, I mean we 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 put out a casting call on various websites. I mean, I, like you know, we're a low budget film. You know, we we didn't have the access to sort of big casting directors like right. like everything in the film. It was a labor of love that we had to carry out ourselves. So me and my two other producers, Adam Silver and Andrew Fora, we put out a casting call and we sat through the auditions ourselves. We created us, you know. We put out a casting call saying you know, we look we're casting for an LGBT film. Any rugby experience people have, it, you know, would be great. Um, we had sort of you know lots of applications. We had to sift through all the showreels. Then we sort of created a short list and tried to audition, you know, everyone and had people come into and we filmed the auditions. You know, pretty standard casting process. So right. we we found uh, except we we had about fifteen people to cast, fifteen roles, which is quite a lot for a. <laughs> you know, for yeah. a and that that you know for a, we had a, a very small window in which to do the casting before we had you know the shoot had to start so we kind of planned everything in before we'd even cast the film in some sense. <laughs> um, but we found Alexander Lincoln first, uh, you know, as our mark, and he was okay. sensational. It was a very easy decision right from the beginning. Um, and then we got him back in once we'd given him the role to do some chemistry reads with potential Warrens. And that was really exciting to see him play off different actors and to see which chemistry would, you know, and then obviously him and Alexander King, we just thought they were, they were lightning in a jar when we saw them together. And that was, just, it was an easy decision. But actually we also did some chemistry reads with potential Henrys because in some ways that's the, the second love story of the film. Right. Even, even if it's an unrequited love story, it's in a, a best friend who is in love with kind of his best friend really, who doesn't right. feel the same way. And so we did some chemistry reads with potential Henrys. And actually when we found Will Hurl, who plays Henry, it was again an amazing moment of just watching these two characters together um and in fact when uh, will left the room alex who, who stayed in the room was because he was we'd given him the role at that point so he was you know sort of part of the casting panel right. he said oh he's very good isn't he you might, <laughs> you might even be a bit better than me i'm watching why he's up to upstage me Check up alex to worry about being upstaged but but you know they're both they're both absolutely sensational actors and it was a joy to work with them both you know they were, they were just i think they're fabulous in the role they do because they, they really do I mean, you, you can see them together. They have really amazing chemistry. But I think you're right too. I mean, that, that role of Henry, that, that's an important, that's a, oftentimes a harder one to pull off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a very vulnerable character and, you know, it's a, there's a very thinly veiled alcoholism sort of plot right. line, you know, which we don't sort of, again, it's, we don't, we're not too preachy about it. it we kind of just, it's just happening there. Right. And, and we don't resolve it. It, it, it sort of resolves itself slightly, but it's, it's uh, something I think, you know, a lot of gay men have, whether it's alcohol or substance problems, it's kind of a big thing. And we, I wanted right. that to be, you know, they're simmering in the story in some sense, you know, because it's, especially there's, you know, big drinking culture in rugby. Right. And some people that that's fine. You you can have a healthy relationship with alcohol and some people can slip into less healthy relationships with alcohol and especially that environment it's not always healthy right <laughs> there's a lot of drinking in, in a rugby club. Right. Um, and i thought you know his character was very interesting to and i think henry uh, the guy will who plays henry was sensational yeah um so tell us a little bit about i mean the, the film is is kind of opening up and you're playing different festivals how how is it going for, for the film? I mean, uh, people reacting, I, I think from what I've seen, people reacting very well. Um, some of it's a little divisive. Like you said, it's a good conversation to have. I think if you're, if you're, if something's not divisive, you're, it's very vanilla. I think, uh, <laughs> I can't remember who it was, you said, if you don't make enemies or something, you know, you're not doing, right. anything, you're not doing something worthwhile. And I think, you know, the, the fact that the film is so provocative and, and sparks discussion is, is uh, something I think we're very proud of. In terms of what it's doing at the moment, we've just opened uh, in cinemas in the UK it, okay. last week. And we had a, we had a wide stream cinema release, which is, you know, absolutely amazing for a small independent gay feature film to get right. to, yeah. um, in major cinemas. Um, we, uh, 
in Europe, open in November in cinemas in number in number of countries, Israel, Australia, and in, I think in America, it, uh, we've, we've sold uh, the American rights to a company and it's going to be uh, coming out in cinemas in the springtime. I think initially in, in New okay. York and LA, and then it'll move to sort of other cities as it progresses. But right. and then we're doing, a, like, like yours, we're doing a number of festivals between that, that time. Right. So if people Thanks. want to try and catch it before then, they have to sort of look up the, the best places to look on the, the Instagram right. or Facebook page <laughs> we announce the sort of various festivals and screenings we're doing along the way in there. <laughs> and, and so Matt, uh, one of the things that I'm always kind of curious about, uh, you know, so much, you, you put so much into a film regardless you put a lot into a film um you put a lot in, into this film and i think i just believe that as an artist there's a part of the of the art that always stays with you what about this film is going to stay with you i mean a lot of it i mean I'm, I'm very, <laughs> you, know, you say that you put a lot of yourself into a film i mean uh it, it was a lot of work for me in the sense that because it was a low budget film i had to take on many many more roles than i think a normal director would have to do you know i had to be the cinematographer had to edit it and I actually also had to write the music for the film which was a lot of work you know I mean my <laughs> pandemic my pandemic was basically spent you know making finishing this film after we shot it you know, okay. we, shot, we, shot, we shot it pre-pandemic in sort of uh, January February 2019 yeah. but I mean I'm pretty one of the few rare people that the pandemic was actually quite helpful for in the sense that <laughs> you know, unfortunately I lost my job but you know I had some we had the government subsidies and my mortgage was frozen for about eight months okay. so I spent eight, eight months staying at home editing and writing music and you know, just trying to churn this film out. And it was a lot of work. And so I think in a lot of ways, a lot of it stays with me because um, there's a lot of me in that film, you know, literally in the sense that right. I have to you know, craft so many different things of it, you know, and it was, uh, so I think, yeah, it's, I'm not sure if I've answered the question very well, but yeah. <laughs> but I think a lot of it is staying with me. I think there's, there's, uh, there's many scenes in it that I think are very, you know, it's also a world that I've lived in. It's a very personal story in the sense right. that many things in my life that are in that film that, you know, things that, you know, from things that I've done in my past, things I've from people I've met, stories I've told, all kind of thrown into that film. So, and yeah. and what's one thing that you would hope that somebody would walk away with after seeing this film? I think I'd so say there's a uh, one of the common things that people say that was well, some of the feedback we've had this week since it came out in cinemas is um, I wish this had existed when I was younger. Um, and I think in some ways I almost feel the same way. I feel like it had this film existed when I was younger, maybe I would have gone into sport more, or maybe I would have felt that, you know, things like sport were not inaccessible to me. And, you know, as so I, I coach rugby still, you know, it, I, um, one of the things I specialize in, I get a lot of new people who've never played rugby before and teach them, bring them up to speed in about eight weeks. We do it at my rugby club in, in the Brighton in the South of the UK. Okay. Um, I coach what we call the Tri Rugby Program. And I love seeing people who feel like, you know, they come along for a session, very tentative, they're not sure it's for them, and then see their confidence build and grow over the weeks. And, you know, and as they realize, actually, I'm quite good at this sport and I really like right. it. <laughs> I hope in some ways that this film, not just for rugby, but sport generally, just it gives the confidence to gay people or queer people to try and take take up sport or to not, if it's not a sport, to take up something that they feel might not be for them, but actually they don't realize there's a whole world out there of like inclusive something or other that's for them. <laughs> and, to, um, you know, and also, I suppose, on another part more generally, um, you know, to be kinder on, on ourselves and be less judgmental, because I think that we live in a very judgmental world and yeah. actually, uh, empathy is something that I think we're sorely lacking in, in this day and age. And actually, you know, if we can feel sorry for people who, you know, essentially cheat on their partners, but fall in love with someone else, if we can, if we can develop empathy for that, we can develop empathy for, for anyone. Um, yeah, so those would be the two things I'd say okay. uh, I hope to walk away from. Excellent. Well, Matt, I think that is really a beautiful way to end. Um, this conversation. I really appreciate uh, you being able to take the time to talk with us um, and, and, and thank you for the, for the film and, and making it available for our audiences in Atlanta who I think are really going to connect with this film in a multitude of ways. Um, and so um, again, we are screening in from the side at Out on Film's 35th, uh, Out on Film 35th Anniversary Film Festival, and we are screening on Saturday, uh, the 24th at 7. And so come out and experience In From the Sides. Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, and I, and I hope you enjoy the film. You. Thank you. <laughs>